Good evening, brothers and sisters. This is Minister Elder Crystal Fortier again coming to you from New Salvation Ministries also, as well as Calvary Christian Messianic Church um, with Pastor Gerald Fortier and Pastor Harold Ball. And greetings. It's an awesome opportunity to be here again with you. And this time I'd like to touch on God's seven feast days that were given to us um, years ago, uh, many moons ago, um, when actually back when Abraham decided to adopt God as his God. And he was one of many, I'm sure, hundreds of people that God may have uh, uh, asked to follow him. And it just so happened that Father Abraham was the one person who adopted things of God and the most high power, the most high principality in the universe and to follow his ways. And the ways that God gave uh, uh, Abraham and who Abraham was, was a Jewish man. And so we, our ways are, should be God's ways and God's ways should be our ways. And so Father Abraham was a Jew. And um, I mean no disrespect when I say Jew, but he was Jewish in culture. He was Jewish in scripture. He was Jewish in his ways. And God designed the Jewish, uh, a Jewish culture to be the roots of David, to be the roots of our Christianity and what we, how we know it today. Jesus, our Messiah, our Jesus Christ, our Mashiach, was a Jewish rabbi. He was a Jewish man who knew Jewish culture, who practiced Jewish culture from a baby, from a child, because his parents were also born from the tribe of Judah, and Jesus was the last of the tribe of Judah. And so God designed it that way. And so, but something happened later on in time where it was taken, it was stolen away from us. We. Uh, it, what was what was stolen away from us? Our ability to follow after things of God that represent our Jewish culture, that represent um, the Jewish way of thinking, that represent um, um, what God and what Jesus and how the Holy Spirit together uh, want us to practice on a daily basis if you choose to, but most of us do it once a month and then there are many people who do it on the day it was appointed. And Jesus actually fulfilled all the days that were appointed. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about God's feast days. God um, is, represents the number seven. It's the number of perfection. Um, it represents he finished his work and rested on that day. He created everything and then he rested on the Sabbath. Um, but number seven represents God. Number 14 represents Jesus, and 21 represents the Holy Spirit. And we know that uh, fulfillment of these feast days, at least four of them, we know happened on the exact day that God designed it to happen. Jesus fulfilled the first of the seven feast day at the exact appointed time that God appointed them to happen. The first of which feast days, what you see behind me is called a menorah. It's not a candelabra and why is it there? It's called a menorah. And the menorah is the, the candlestick. They also had a menorah, a seven stick, uh, a, a candle, a, a menorah in the, in the tabernacle when uh, Moses built the tabernacle, the original tabernacle. In the in the in the desert with the children of Israel with the uh, with the specified with the specifications that were given by the Most High God, so we know that the first um, realm, the first stick here on the candle on the uh, menorah represents the feast day called Passover. Passover has happened many times in the Old Testament. It happened with Abraham and his first born son Isaac, and God provided a ram in the bush who became Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, the Most High God provided him Passover lamb at that time. And then it happened again when the children of Israel passed over the Red Sea. And it happened again when, um, uh, 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 sorry, with the children of Israel, Moses, it ha happened again uh, before, I'm sorry, before that even happened, it happened in 
Egypt when the children of Israel were going to uh, the tenth plague, where God said, if you don't paint the, the on your doorposts the uh, the blood of an unspotted lamb of the first year, then the death angel will come and kill you. And so we know that the children of Israel, those who were obedient, were obedient, and the death angel did not it spared their and their families' lives. And then Jesus became the final Passover um, in the New Testament. And so the first being Passover, the second being unleavened bread. Leaven represents sin. The, um, he became sin, our sin. He took upon the sin of the whole world, past, present, and future, and he took it and he died. So unleavened bread is the day that Jesus died. And then we have first fruit, which represents the day that he rose from the grave. And then Pentecost, 50 days later, we know that he promised that he would leave us uh, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came on the 120 Jews in the upper room and it poured itself on them and they spoke with other languages. You all know the story. And so that represents the day of Pentecost. And we know that Jesus has fulfilled the first four of the seven feast days that he's designed for his people to practice. Jesus, when he was a child, when he was when he got lost uh, from his parents and he was in town and that was Passover. And then uh, I'm going to show you some scriptures where where Paul uh, practiced Passover, where the disciples practiced Passover. Jesus didn't practice Christmas, and he didn't practice Easter, and he didn't practice Saint Valentine's Day, and he didn't practice Saint Saint. Uh, 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 what's another, what's another one? Uh, Patrick's Day or 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 Good Friday or Ash Wednesday or Lent. No, these are pagan days given to us by the pagan Roman Catholic Church who was represented in the book of the Revelation as the great whore of Babylon. And, and if, you, if you don't know, then study. And if you need to study, come on over with us and study with Pastor Ball and Pastor Gerald and, and, and study with us so that you can, you know, really show yourself approved like, you know, First Timothy in uh, 2.15, you know. Um, uh, you want to make sure that you study to show thyself approved unto righteousness, a, a workman. Be that workman or workwoman who rightly divides the word of truth, uh, not as being ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And so, you know, God has caused me, uh, Minister Christopher, y'all don't know, but I've been studying for a while. I'm pastor, thank God for Pastor McLeod and, and uh, Next Dimension Destiny Center and, and, and Next Dimension uh, Bible College and University now. Dr. McLeod, and, and who put a fire under me with my brother Jonathan, Mama Netta, um, Gerald 48, Kimberly 48, and now Pastor Ball, and, and, and God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, has just made me desire. Uh, I give accolades to uh, Minister D'Antoinette. I always call her, with the Sisters Ministry, I always call her my silent mentor. She laughs about it. But, you know, I glean from people, and I have gleaned from many people in ministry. And uh, I don't show how, you know, how the Lord has used me in the street ministry. I haven't showed you videos on how, you know, I've been doing this for years now. But, you know, God said it's about time, Crystal. I need you to show what these feast days, because the first feast day is coming up on April the 10th of 2017. And it needs to be mentioned. It needs to be um, uh, um exposed um, through a different medium. Um, it's out there. There are other pastors uh, who are teaching this. Pastor Ball teaches on Friday nights at 7 on Facebook. And we have Wednesday night Bible study. We have, uh, you know, you got Pastor Ray Bentley in, at Maranatha in San Diego teaching. You've got uh, Dr. Uh, you've got um, um, uh, Perry, Perry Stone, Pastor Perry Stone teaching it. If you look him up, You've got the Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, who was a Christian uh, Jew. You know, we've he's a Christian Jew, and we're Christ, he's a Jewish Christian Rabbi, and we're Christian Jews. So we're Messianic Christians, which means we have adopted our Jewish culture. Until we learn to peel off the the paganness of ourselves and recognize that we are Jewish. And God, Jesus Christ, was not white or black or 
whatever color you want to give him, whatever nationality, y'all can fight about it. Just don't, just don't, just don't, you know, you know, just keep it to yourself. Jesus was a man of God. He was a Jewish man. He was a Jewish carpenter. He was a Jewish rabbi who taught the Jewish culture, who practiced the Jewish culture. He even told us to keep his feast days. And I'm going to show you in scripture how he told us to do that. But before I go on, Lord Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will cover me, Father, that it won't be me, Father. Help me be contrite and broken in your sight, Father. And as you put me back together again, I speak your word. I be the vessel that speaks the word that you give me, Father. I claim this. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to start off, start off by saying this. Time was changed. Time was changed. And what, I, what do I mean by that when I say that time was changed? Well, back in uh, many, many moons ago, see, God's time, God's timetable starts off on a day that starts on, um, it starts on, uh, the first hour is 7 p.m. The first hour is 7 p.m. So the first hour of the original day was 7 p.m. If you just go back in the Bible, just go to back to the Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 and it's real simple it's right there in front of you and it says in Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 it says that um, it says and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day so every time he completed a day it was from evening to morning so the original time that God gave us is from evening to to morning the evening um the last hour of the evening is the 12th hour and the first hour i'm gonna show you on my ipad here the first hour represents um let me see real quick i'm sorry the first hour represents uh 7 p.m now you see the black numbers is our time right and you see that the red numbers is the original time that god designed the first hour, the second hour, the third hour, the fourth hour, the fifth hour, sixth hour, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and the twelfth hour will be sunset or six p.m. Then and then the first hour starts at seven again. So evening to evening was a full day. The way that we count time, it's it's um it's not evening to evening, it's morning to morning. From midnight to midnight is what, so we know that man, and I could tell you some names, Constantine and this Julius Caesars and a bunch of them, they changed time because they wanted to, us to be confused about God's timetable. And so just to stay on the note of time real quick, to show you some, another thing, they not only changed time, but they changed God's calendar. On the original calendar um, that God gave us, um, it wasn't um, the original God's original calendar wasn't Monday through Friday. God's original calendar was uh, the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, and then Sabbath. Okay. And I'm going to try to show that to you if I can. I'm going to try to find it on my, here it is, right here. Okay, so the Creator's calendar, God's calendar, looks like this. Oh, sorry. One second. Okay. So this is God's original calendar, if I can get you to see that. And you can see that the first day starts on the new moon. Okay? The first day starts on the new moon. And then the first, the second day or the first day of the week is day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and the Sabbath. That's the creator's time clock, well, calendar. And then the Julian calendar, which looks like this, which is what we have adopted because we had to. I'm sorry, real quick. The Julian calendar looks like this. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's not how God designed it. God did not design it that way. But we had to adopt it. Either we die with the original Jewish people who were being killed at that time. Either we die or we adopt their pagan ways. 
And so we adopted the pagan ways, the sun goddess way, Eshtar and Nimrod and Tammuz. There's no baby Jesus. That's Ishtar, his mom, who is also, who married her own son. So Ishtar, uh, Tammuz, was born out of, out of, oh my gosh, incest. And so that's not the baby Jesus that we see. That's Tammuz. That's the sun god's child. I don't want to even go there. But I'm going to take you back for a minute to help you understand how we've got to stop, we've got to peel off these pagan days. Because in order for Jewish people who are our brothers and sisters to recognize that we do not follow after, that's why they don't want anything to do with us. That's why they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. That's one of the reasons. Because we refuse to release the pagan uh, uh, celebrations that we so glorify like Christmas and Eshtar and Val St. Valentine's Day and, and what's so holy about uh, 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 praying to uh, Mary, Mother of God? She is not Jesus Christ. She didn't die for my sins. But I don't want to go there. But mm, there's so much information I have here. I want to show you God's feast days. That's my point here. This video is being done because I wanted to get this out here before Passover. Passover is April the 10th, 2017. April the 10th, 2017 is Passover. And I want you to understand that Passover is the day that God designed, Jesus designed us to, to follow. He told us to follow it. He followed it while he walked the earth. He didn't follow Christmas. He didn't tell us to celebrate his day of his birth. He told us to celebrate his death, burial, resurrection, and Pentecost. The day the Holy Spirit was given to the, the, to, to the disciples and who were following after Christ. And it also represents the day that Moses received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. That's what he told us to do. And we've been in error for a long time. And until we start seeing our, with our Jewish eye and with our Christian eye together, we will never be united as a church. And this is, I believe, why God is telling us that only a remnant is going to make it in. I want to be part of the remnant. So turn with me to Esther chapter 12, verse 1. Go to Esther chapter 12, verse 1. Esther chapter 12. I'm sorry. Exodus, Exodus, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, and it says this. I'm going to try to get this done quick. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month, which month is he talking about? Is he talking about January? January wasn't even created back then. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of, of the year to you. What month is the first month of the year? Okay, what, which month is the first day of the year? Turn to Esther chapter um, 3, verse 7. Go to Esther chapter 3, verse 7. Esther chapter 3, verse 7. Esther chapter 3, verse 7. And what does it say? In the first month. So Esther is going to explain to us when the first month falls. In the first month, this is the month Nisan. In the 12th year of King Asherah's they cast per, that is the lot, before Haman from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is the month Adar. So we know the first month on the original calendar is what? It's Nisan. And the twelfth month on God's calendar is Adar. And let me show you that real quick um, right now so you can see what I'm talking about. Real quick, let me show you. Uh, I'm going to try to give you a recent one, which is awesome. This is a recent one. Okay. Right now, uh, God's calendar usually falls uh, mid-month on our calendar. And I can show you, like, today is the, uh, today is March, today is March the 23rd. And if you see here, if you can see this, look close, you see March the 23rd, it says what? Adar 25, I think. 
Adar 25. So we're in the month of Adar. Adar 25. So we know, so that's March 20th. Let me show you what Adar looks like. This is Adar. This is God's calendar, original, and this is the Jews still use this to this day. That's where I got this from, off one of their websites. And if you look on March the 23rd, it says Adar 25. You see that? And the year is 5777 on the original calendar. Okay. Now, I want you to see that so like a, you can see for yourself that I'm not playing with this, that I'm serious because God created his, uh, God created his months of the year, you know, and man came along and stole them and switched them up and tried to fool us into thinking that this is the original time, but it's a lie. It's a lie. It's not the original time. It's not the original calendar is we've all been bamboozled. We've all been lied to. We've all been lied to. And it's time that we wake up out of this sleep and slumber that we're in. Now, I'm going to show you something. It's, these are the original months. The first month falls, Nisan, falls between March and April. And you can see with the special dates, Passover. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. The first one is uh, Ayer and Sivan and Tammuz and Menchikim and Elul, Tishri. Um, you got... Uh, Marchisavan and Kevez, Kevez, and you've got the uh, uh, Tevet, was it Shabbat, and then Adar falls between February and March. So we're in the in March. We just missed Purim. Purim, Purim is actually the the day that uh, God doesn't didn't give it to us as one of His feast days, but it's actually one of the days that Esther. Uh, is actually the one day that Esther, um, when Esther delivered her people, uh, children of Israel, from the hand of Haman and um, uh, Mordecai from being killed. Um, he, uh, uh, Haman was killed on the same gallow that he prepared for Mordecai, which was Esther's uncle. But that's a whole nother story. So we know the time was changed. And so God told us to celebrate, and he told us the days of the month. He told us when to do it. So if we go to Exodus 12, uh, verse 14, go to Exodus chapter 12, verse 14, Exodus chapter 12, verse 14, Exodus 12, verse 14, it says this, it says this, and this day shall be unto you a what? A memorial, a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. God didn't say keep it by feast by ordinance for just until, um, you know, 70 years or 50 years. He said forever. But it was stolen from us. It's one of the mysteries in the Bible. Just like the mystery of the grace of God. When Daniel had his dream, he couldn't, he could only see straight ahead. He couldn't see the time that we live in now. So, so, so he predicted what he can see straight ahead. He couldn't see the dip in the mountain. He couldn't see where we are right now. But that's okay because the revelation describes, Isaiah describes. God is amazing. God is amazing. So we know that God's feast days are to be as a memorial. You shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. You shall keep it a feast as an order, or ordinance forever. Not Christmas, not Easter, not a Good Friday or Ash Wednesday or Lent or all of these crazy days and they, they, you spend all your money. It, God didn't tell us to do that. Jesus didn't do it when he lived on the earth. And so let's keep going. Go to, um, so we went to Exodus 12, 14. Go to Exodus 12, verse 2. I think I already read this, but let me go back. Um, it shall be the beginning of months, the first of the month for you. Okay, we did that. We did Esther chapter 3, verse 7. Go to es Exodus 12, 3. Uh, speaking to the church. Uh, okay, here's another one. Speaking to the congregation of Israel, saying, into, saying in the 10th day, so we're talking about the 10th day of Nisan. We know Nisan represents the first month of the year. The 10th day of this month, Shall be, shall, uh, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the household of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Okay? 
Um, every, it says, speak to the, unto the congregation of Israel, speaking, um, it says, um, speak to the, uh, the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day, the tenth day of this month, you shall take them, every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for every house. Okay. And so we know that this is the same day. Okay. This is the same day that Jesus rode into the, um, uh, uh, he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey on the 10th day. So the sacrifice was coming into um, Jerusalem as Jesus Christ later on, but God designed the 10th day for the lamb to be, uh, for, uh, to get the lamb. Um, if you go down to five, it says, your lamb shall be without blemish, um, a male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats. And what's it say? It says in verse six, it says, ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, so you should get it on the 10th. You should keep it, until, get it on the 10th. Keep it until the 14th day, right? Um, a male without blemish of the first year, okay? Take it out of the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall what? Shall kill it in the evening. So that's telling us something. It's telling us on the 10th day, which is the same day that Jesus rode in on the, he, he prepared himself. He was obedient up to the Lord. He got the donkey, excuse me, the donkey took him into Jerusalem. The, the Old Testament conceals and then the New Testament reveals. And so Jesus fulfilled everything that was practiced in the Old Testament because it was set up as a, uh, um, uh, um, I forget the word, but it was set up for us to, to celebrate it every single year um, until he comes back again. So every one of these candlesticks, every one, this vine, he is the vine. He's the middle one. He's the vine. And we are the branches. And we are to follow and hang on to the vine. We're, we're, we're to follow these feast days. So the ten, on the tenth day of the of Nisan, Jesus, the God said, "Go get the unspotted lamb of the within the first year. Can't be more than a year old. Unspotted. Keep it. Hold on to it until the fourteenth day." And that's what Jesus did. He rode into Jerusalem on the tenth day, and on the fourteenth of Nisan, what happened? It says, "You should what?" It says. And ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, Nisan 14. You think you don't know the day that Jesus died? Yes, you do. It says it right here. Ye shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So God is telling, he's concealing and telling us exactly what's going to happen in the old, and it was fulfilled in the new. We know that Jesus died on the cross on Nisan 14. We even know the year. So you have to go back. But the, this is the thing. Here it is. This is the thing. Jesus was killed in the evening. Jesus went to the cross on the uh, third hour. Remember the hour starts seven, eight, nine. So he went on the cross on the third hour of the day, which was nine o'clock in the morning, but was really nighttime because their time was from evening to morning. Remember? Evening to evening was one full day. Evening to morning was the half of the day. And then morning to evening again was the other half of the day. So their day started at 7 p.m. The first hour started at 7 p.m. And Jesus fulfilled. He's fulfilled every feast day. But now we're talking about Passover. So we know that Jesus died on Nisan 14th. Okay, now if we keep reading, um, let's see, did we do Exodus chapter 12, verse 3? Uh, go to, um, let's see, 6, and she'll keep it to the 14th day, the whole sin congregation. Okay, we did that. And then we go to uh, Exodus, we go to Leviticus, go to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus, go to Leviticus. 
That's the next chapter over, chapter 23, verse 5. And what does it say? It says, in the 14th day, okay, at evening is the Lord's Passover. I didn't make it up. It's right here in the Bible. Exodus chapter 23, verse 5. It says, in the 14th day of the first month, at evening is the Lord's Passover. So we know that Jesus died in the evening on the 14th day of the first month. Nisan 14, Jesus died. Okay. And go to 6. It says, and on the 15th day, which is the next day, of the same month, Nisan, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Until the Lord. Seven days ye must, ye must eat unleavened bread. So we know that the next day, he died. I'm sorry. He was buried on unleavened bread. So it's telling us on the 15th day of the same month of, is the feast, feast of unleavened bread. So unleavened, leaven represents sin. Unleavened is something that's sinless. So we know that unleavened bread is 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 a bread without yeast yeast represents sin and we know that unleavened bread represents the sin um, that was taken away so unleavened bread is the death of our lord jesus christ i'm sorry the bed the burial he died on passover right he rose he was buried on unleavened bread jesus was buried on unleavened bread he became our leaven he became sin for us, and he took away our sins by dying for our sins. Okay? And it says, um, in the first day, he shall have an holy convocation. And so God wants us to have a holy convocation. He wants us to... Um, um, it says in the first, the first day is the Passover. He's talking about having, there should be a, pa and I'm, we're going to have a Passover meal um, on uh, April the 10th. We're actually going to do, it's called a Passover Seder. We're going to have a Passover Seder. And just get in contact with me if you'd like to come. But, but we're going to show the Lord's, we're going to show the Lord's Supper. We're going to, we're, you know, I've been going to Passover Seders probably the last six years or so. And I trust God, and I know that this is word. I'm not making this up. So we know on the 15th day, he died. He was, I'm sorry, he, he was buried. He, he died on Passover, and he was buried on unleavened bread. So let's keep on reading. Um, if we go to, um, you'll find Passover in the Bible seven, seven times in the King James Version. You always want to stick with the King James Version of the Bible. If we go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 2, go to Matthew New Testament. Let's show uh, how the New Testament uh, reveals what's going on in the Old. Chapter 26, right? Uh, verse 2, it says, um, it says, Ye know that after two days is the feast of Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. And so it's saying that. Uh, two days after the 10th, around the 12th of Nisan, um, 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 Jesus is telling us that in two days, I'm going to be the Passover lamb. Jesus is speaking here. This is in red. Just saying. It says, ye know that. He's talking to his disciples. I'm going to go to one. It came to pass when Jesus had finished all these things uh, to his disciples it said, ye know that after two days is the feast of Passover. So even the disciples, that's what I'm saying, they were Jewish people. They knew the feast of Passover was coming up. They knew that they were going to be uh, celebrating the feast of Passover. They just had no idea that Jesus was going to be, their, their, their very best friend was going to be the, the final Passover lamb. And he's trying to explain to them that I'm going to the cross in two days. It's not going to be like all the other Passovers that we've celebrated together. This one is going to be different because I'm going to, I'm going to allow my life to be laid down for my friends because I love you that much. 
He says, ye know that after two days is a feast of, of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Come on now. He's letting them know. He's letting them know that I'm going to be, I'm going to be the final Passover. Praise God. Now, go to Leviticus chapter 23. Go to Leviticus chapter, go back. Leviticus chapter 23. Go back. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 10 and 11. And what's it say? It says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give you, ye shall reap the harvest thereof. And then shall ye bring a sheaf of first fruits of your harvest to the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf. This is how they used to wave it like this. They would bring up this basket full of all of the offerings and they will wave it like this they will wave the sheaf um um bring it, bring it and you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of the harvest into the priest and you shall wave the sheaf before the lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the sabbath on the morrow after the sabbath the priest shall wave it well what does that mean the morrow after the sabbath well we know the sabbath was on what day the saturday right we know the Sabbath was on the seventh day. So what is the morrow after the Sabbath? The morrow after the Sabbath is Sunday. So we know that we, we can't get, if Jesus died and, 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 and he told us that on the, on the 14th day I died, I was uh, buried on the 15th day, and, and um, we know that the morrow after the Sabbath, uh, well, let me ask you a question, is a Sunday, Okay, so how, how do you get from Friday to Sunday, how do you get three days? That's only two days. That would be a Monday that he would have rose from the grave. But the Bible says that he rose tomorrow after the Sabbath. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheep and, and the he lamb without blemish of the first year for the burnt offering unto the Lord. When you wave your sheep offering, that's first fruits. So that represents the third day. That's the day that he rose from the grave. It's not called Easter or Resurrection Sunday. If you just celebrate Resurrection Sunday, you're missing out on Passover and unleavened bread. So the first one, Passover, that's the day he died. Unleavened bread is the day that he was buried. And first fruits is the day that he rose from the grave. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is so awesome. And he's going, he's telling us the story here. He's telling us exactly, exactly, okay, when he's going to die, when he's going to be buried, and when he's going to rise again. Now, let's keep moving. I want you to keep, I want you to keep up. Go to Matthew 28, verse 1. Matthew 28, verse 1. Go to Matthew 28, verse 1. Matthew, New Testament, 28. Verse 1, it says, In the end of the Sabbath, as, as, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So we know that they came to see Jesus. And it's, it's weird the way you see it because it seemed like it was a whole nother day. But remember, their day started in the evening. Their day started at the first hour. And their first hour was 7 PM. Their first hour was always at sundown. Sundown ended one day and then the first hour. So sundown, the first hour is the first hour of the next day already. So we know from evening to morning is the first day. You understand? Okay. Uh, based on the uh, uh, Genesis. So we know evening to morning represents a day. So it was the evening, the first hour. So we, it says here at the end of the Sabbath. So the end of the Sabbath would have been sundown on the Sabbath. That's the end of the Sabbath. As it begun to dawn towards the first day. The first day would have been the first hour or seven or somewhere around that time when they were at the sepulcher of Jesus. And that's when they said he rose early Sunday morning. Well, their morning actually represented the first few hours of the day, which was the evening time. And they were there. The women were there at the sepulcher. Isn't this awesome? so awesome? 
Now go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 23. Okay. It says, it says, um, but every man in his own order, right? Christ the first fruits, afterwards that they are Christ at his coming. Um, but every man in his own order, Christ is the first fruits. And so Jesus, the first fruits, represents the day that he rose from the grave. It's called first fruits. That's the third feast that Jesus fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled all the first four. And we're going to go over the next one in just a minute. But let me say this. If we go back to Pentecost, did you know, a little bit of history here, that there have been 21 blood moons since the death of Jesus Christ that have occurred on Passover? Since in, For the last 2,016 years, there have been 21 blood moons blood moons that occurred on Passover and they will not ever occur again for I believe it's another 500 years. What does the number 21 represents? <laughs> Every number represents. God has, he's, he's a numerologist, he's the, the greatest numerologist in the universe and, and that's a whole nother sermon. So I'm not going to go there right now. If I go to 1 Corinthians 11, 26, 1 Corinthians, we're back in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. It says what? Real quick. It says, um, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, okay, this, this cup is the New Testament of his blood. Ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. So God, so Jesus told us, now he told us to keep this holy communion. I'm sorry, did I call it communion? Feel, forgive me, it's not called communion, it's called Passover. He told us to keep this holy Passover. He told us to keep it forever. That was in the beginning when he told us to keep the feast days forever. Now he's telling us in the New Testament to do what? To remember his blood and his body. And as often as you do, remember him. Now, they call it communion every first Sunday. But communicate is a term from the Roman Catholic Church. God calls it his moed, M-O-E-D, his moed. These are his feast days that were designed to be kept until time ends, until man's time on earth is over. Jesus fulfilled every feast day, the first four, that is, and the three are still to be celebrated, still to be fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the fourth one, let's keep moving. We're almost done here. Go to um, um, go to 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Let's go 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, verse 7. And it says, um, it says that purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover. He's given us clues all through scripture. Why have we not adopted the truth? But we've ad adopted a lie. For Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us so that we can tell the truth. He's our Passover. And then it says, therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, with lies that have been told to us, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice or wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of saint, uh, uh, sincerity and truth. Stop the lies, people. We've been bamboozled and lied to. He told us to keep the feast of Passover. He told us to keep his feast until time ends. And there's more to it. I'm going to show you. Go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. 1 Corinthians, one more thing, one more about first fruit. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and go to verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the what? The first fruit of them that slept. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. What does that mean? Now, Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. That means when Jesus rose from the dead, every person who was dead in Christ rose from the dead at that time. Hallelujah. Because that's what the Holy Ghost does. Hallelujah. You, we can't stay dead. You, if you're a dead church, you can't continue in death if you're following after the truth. Now, but now is Christ risen from the dead? And become the first fruits of them who slept. <laughs> That's awesome to me. I don't even know. Whew. So the third feast, the, the third of the on, on the menorah, the third candle here, from right to left, is first fruits. It's when Jesus rose from the dead on Nisan 18. So Jesus, he actually uh, went to the cross on a Wednesday, and he died. He was buried on a Thursday, and he rose again three days later, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. He went on a Wednesday, he died on a Thursday, and he rose Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days later. We've been lied to. There is no good Friday. It's a lie. Stop yelling. I'm sorry. Now, let's keep moving. The next one, go to 1 Corinthians 16, 8. We're almost finished. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 8. What does it say? It says, but I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. <laughs> this is um, Paul speaking. It's not Jesus speaking. He's speaking to the Corinthians. And he's letting him know that we celebrate Pentecost. We always have. They always have. Because Pentecost represented the day that Moses got the law. So they always celebrated God's feast days. All seven of them. Knowing that only four of them will be fulfilled after Jesus Christ. And we're still waiting on the last three. Now let's go to Pentecost. So you see that Paul is saying, I will tarry at Ephesus at Pentecost. So we know that the disciples celebrated Pentecost. They celebrated Pentecost, the children of Israel. David all, every person from, from, from Moses on down when they were given the law, when they were given, even before that, you know, Abraham, um, uh, Isaac, Jacob, they celebrated God's feast days. They just didn't understand why. We understand why because we live in a time where Jesus fulfilled the first four, but we just weren't taught God's feast days. Now, if we go to... Uh, Let's see. Uh, go to Acts. Let's see. Exodus chapter 32, verse 23. No, I don't want to go to that one. Um, uh, let's go to. Uh, uh, I want to. I want to go to. Uh, so we, we talked about Pentecost. Pentecost is the same day that the Holy Spirit came on the 120 Jewish men who are in the upper room who were tearing for God, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And as a dove, not as a dove, that's when Jesus was baptized. But it came upon them as a rushing mighty wind. And, and they all started speaking in other tongues. Remember that? That was the day of Pentecost. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I'm just so excited. Oh, I get so excited. Mm. Wow. Go to Revelations chapter 13. Okay, go to the Revelations. Revelations chapter 13. Let's give a little re revelation in there. Chapter 13, uh, uh, verse 16 um, and through eight, 16 through 18. Um, show you a little bit about uh, what's coming. Um, it talks about the mark of the beast. Uh, and he calls all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bound, to receive the mark on their right hand and on their forehead. And no one could buy or sell, um, save that he had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. And uh, here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, the number of the, uh, for the number of man. He has the number six fold and six. We know that that represents um, uh, 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 the devil. The number six represents man. And 666 is what they're talking about. The mark of the beast. Don't take the mark of the beast. 
because we're still waiting on the next feast day to be fulfilled. Hang on to your salvation. Hang on tight to your salvation because your redemption draws nigh. It's sooner than we think. You know, there's so many uh, corruptible things happening in our world today. And if you just pay attention to the weather, pay attention to the Maseroth in the sky, pay attention to the Word of God and Revelation chapter 12, it's, 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 it's unfolding before our, our very eyes. And so if you go to, um, um, go to Acts chapter 2, verse 41. 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 And the Bible says this. It says, um, the Bible says this. And it says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them 3,000 souls. Um, if we were to go back to Exodus chapter 32, verse 2, um, that was when Moses came down from the mount and he actually uh, found the children of Israel worshiping this golden calf that was created by Aaron who lied about it. And uh, 3,000 souls were killed at that time. Well, the Bible says here in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 41 that uh, that and um, then that the, then they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto them 3,000 souls. So the God replenished the, uh, the 3,000. It's just how he, you know, God is one, is a God of, of uh, he's linear, he's everywhere, he's all over. God, he, whew, he added 3,000 souls. Just like he took the 3,000, he added 3,000 back. And so we know that um, we know, hallelujah, Jesus, that uh, God is real. Go to, now we're going to talk about the next feast. Go into uh, Ezekiel 46, verse 1. Ezekiel, go back to Old Testament. I need to show you these last feast days real quick. Ezekiel chapter 41. Ezekiel, uh, one of the prophets uh, of God, of the Lord, uh, one of the major prophets. Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 1 says what? It says, Thus said the Lord God, The gate of the inner court that look toward the east shall be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be open, in the day, and in the day of the new moon it shall be open. Well, the day of the new moon is... Um, the one day, it's the one feast day that falls on a new moon, and it's called Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah is a day that God gave man to, that's the day that represents the rapture of the church. Rosh Hashanah represents the day of the opening of the gates. It's also called, no one knows the day or hour, the opening of the gates, the trumpet, the, the great trumpet. I think it's called the, the great trumpet. Um, it's not the last trumpet, but it's... Uh, I think it's the final trumpet but then there's a trumpet after that too um but i know the trumpet will sound at that time and the gates will open what does that mean that the that means that the remnant of god will go into the gate and that represents rosh hashanah which represents the fifth feast day of the lord jesus christ is the day that he comes back for his bride for his church well not for the bride but for the for the church um, the rapture of the church um, uh, uh, is supposed to happen on a Rosh Hashanah. If Jesus fulfilled his feast days on the exact date he said he would, and the blood moons, 21 happened on Pentecost, exactly as God planned them to, 21 blood moons happened in our society, in our world, throughout the generations for 2,000 years on the same day of Pentecost, 21 times. They won't happen again for another 500 or so years. Do you not think that he will fulfill his next three feast days on the appointed times that he has given us? And everything that we know right now is converging. I'm not saying that things are going to happen on that day. I'm saying it's called Rosh Hashanah, an opening of the gates, and no one knows the day or hour. Where did they get that from? No one knows the day or hour. Well, God said that his people are not going to be ignorant, and we will know 
know that the coming of Lord is draw nigh. It will be the uh, it will be those who are sleeping and not paying attention where the thief will come. It will come as a thief in the night. It won't be a thief in the, as a night for uh, for those of us who are studying his word of his word and preparing ourselves for the coming of the Christ. Rosh Hashanah represents the opening of the gates. The gates stay open seven days and and then they shut seven days later and what's that called the next feast day on the tent on the uh, menorah is called the feast of uh, uh, yom kippur yom kippur represents the closing of the gates you won't get in after that you will have to lose your life the time of grace that we know after yom kippur is gone from the earth it will never return again the grace of god will be taken from the earth on Yom Kippur, if you're not ready, God, Jesus will fulfill his feast days at the appointed times that he said he would. So we know that the fifth feast day is Rosh Hashanah. No one knows the day or hour, the opening of the gates. And then the next one is called Yom Kippur, the closing of the gates, seven days later. And that's the day that God's grace will be taken from this world. Okay. Ezekiel 46 we, uh, verse, we did that on the sixth day. Uh, it says, so the gates of the inner court that look towards the east shall be shut the six, day work, six, six working days. But on the seventh day, that is uh, Rosh Hashanah, it shall be open. And in that day, the new moon shall be open. And why is it mentioned a new moon? Because that's the one day there's a slither of a new moon. How do we know about the sliver of a new moon? Because God said, this is how they told time back in the day when they didn't have clock. This is how they created the calendar when they saw the new moon. You had two priests who were, uh, you had two watchmen who were waiting for new moons. And when there was no moon, new moon, they would go back to the priest and they would say, look, there's no new moon right now. Okay, the priest would say, okay, well, there's no, we know that there's a two-day period where there's no moon in the sky. You ever look at the full moon, wait a couple days, it's not going to show up for a couple days later. And so the priest would tell the watchman, okay, well, no one knows the day or hour. No one knows the day or hour when the sliver of that new moon is coming. But when the sliver of that new moon came, that represented the first day of that month. And it's a new year. I'm sorry, uh, Nissan is the first year. But it's, a, it's the first, it's Rosh Hashanah. It represents the sliver of the new moon. That's the only feast day that represents a new uh, moon. Rosh Hashanah. Amen. So go with me to Leviticus chapter 23 and 24, and we're going to close out Leviticus chapter 23. Lord bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 24. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. It says, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, and the, seven, the seventh month is silent. Seventh day of the month, on the first day of the month, you shall be a Sabbath and a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. What does that, what day is that? What is that, day, what day is that? What does that represent? Well, we know that that day represents um, Sukkot, which is tabernacles, it is the feast of tabernacles. And that represents the, the millennial a reign with Christ, that 1,000 years that we're supposed to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ when he, he comes back and we, we all reign and we're all there and we're all working and we're all worshiping and we're all uh, 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 dealing with uh, what we're supposed to. We all have our assignments. We come back with the Lord Jesus Christ to, ro to rule this earth. And God said he's going to rule this earth with, with an iron fist. And so we come back for the millennial reign, the 1,000-year reign. God, God said he gave men 6,000 years, and on the last 7,000 years, we will, reign, we will reign with Christ. And that's called the cult or tabernacles. And so there you have it, God's seven feast days that we are celebrating. We celebrated it. Since I've learned about it, I have been celebrating, and I no longer celebrate Christmas or Easter in my family for the most part, are really kind of um, subdued about it and don't quite get it. And they're, but little by little, they're learning to understand uh, what God represents. And I'm not playing, like I said, when I said on that video at the first of the year, I'm not playing with this thing. I'm going to teach you what I know. I'm going to show you what I know. And it's really up to you to decide that you're going to follow after things of God. 
the first feast day is Passover. Passover is the day that Jesus uh, uh, died on the cross. The second feast day is unleavened bread. It's the day that he was buried. The third is first fruits. It represents the day that he rose from the grave. The fourth it represents Pentecost. The day of Pentecost is the day that the Holy Spirit came on the 120 Jews in the upper room, our brothers and our sisters. The, the fourth the fifth feast day represents Rosh Hashanah, the opening of the gates, the rapture of the church. The next feast day represents um, the feast of um, uh, 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 Yom Kippur, the closing of the gates, where grace will be taken from this earth. And the last and final feast day represents tabernacles, and that's that 1,000 millennial reign. I will celebrate what God tells me to celebrate. I will do what God tells me to do. And I thank God that he allowed me to learn what I've learned and help you to learn what you've learned. If you have any questions, you guys have my number. Those who have it, contact me on Facebook. Contact me on YouTube, Minister Crystal Fortier. Leave your comments. Let me know or if I can help. I'm just going to keep studying more and more and more and growing more and more in things of God. And I, I admonish you to do the same. God love you. God keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he bring you his peace. And I love you. I love you with my heart. I love man. I love God. I love to tell God's stories and, and give what God tells me to tell you. You don't know how I struggle to get this word out. How these last couple months, uh, even to my, the sickness in my body, but I don't claim it. I know that it's a shifting going on that had to happen to me in order to, to get me to buckle down and teach this word like he designed me to do so. And I thank him for it. And I praise and worship him for it. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you're playing church, I remember uh, Miss Sister Keisha used to say, we got to stop playing church. Stop playing church, people. It ain't about one save, always save. Now, that's another video that I did earlier today. To most high God be all the glory. Give your life to Christ. Say this after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I believe that Jesus is the son of God and he died for my sins. Lord, forgive me. I believe that he rose again on the third day. I believe, Lord, in your feast days, Father. I believe that he's the son of God. I want him to live in me rule me. I think, I think, I believe, I would like for the Holy Spirit to live in me, to rest, rule, and abide inside of me, and guide me, and to be my guide. And thank you, God. I love you, Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' name. I love you guys. Please love Jesus back. He has so much to offer. God bless you. Bye-bye.